So this is an extra video that I am coming up with to show you how you attach an engine analyzer to a vehicle because there are a lot of cables here and they all have to go somewhere. Now before you do this, especially with the MEA 1500, make sure it's powered up and it goes through its 15 minute timeout before it'll let you calibrate the gas uh, portion of it or the gas analyzer portion, sorry. And I'll swing the arm out. So we have several hookups we need to deal with here. The first one is our vacuum line. I don't have the proper sun end, so I just have this little adapter. I need to get manifold vacuum off this from somewhere. Now, I could always use ported vacuum as well. I can use a T-junction, whatever. But here on the Eagle, I can just reach down and I can grab the manifold vacuum source for the booster on the select drive and plug that in. Okay. And these are our battery leads. So for our grounding, I'll attach that to the engine strap there. And for the positive side, I'm just going to attach it to the positive point here on the starter. There we go. We should actually have voltage on here now. Let's see. And we do. Okay. The next cable here, trying to be careful because this will tangle on itself. So you get this here, which needs to plug into the tachometer line on the vehicle. This uses an alligator clip. This here uses the DuraSpark plastic mounting tower, so you can't get that in there. You need a crocodile clip. So I'll put that in there, and then I'll attach it to that. I'm going to just sling it around the shock tower here so it gets out of the way. We are not going to be using that for this video here, so we're just going to keep those jumpered together. This is your cylinder number one pickup. So that can go anywhere between the number one tower on the distributor and the number one plug. This, it does not matter which direction it goes on. And again, I'll just kind of swing it out of the way here. This is the secondary pattern pickup. Looks significantly different. Um, this one, as we can see here, has managed to um, get hit by a couple of hot objects more than once. But that, between the coil and the distributor center post, that just clips over. There we go. Make sure it's closed. Sling it out of the way. The green amp clamp here has an arrow on it. The instructions in the manual say to have the arrow pointing towards the battery. Sure, that just clips there, that is the closest point over the battery, it doesn't specifically say on the engine ground. And did we have anything else? No, we do not. Cool. Ah, yes, the remote. The remote is magnetic, so you can just stick it up there if you want. I don't want to keep it anywhere near these. I mean, it's magnetic so you can stick it to the body of the car, but at the same time, that's how you scratch your paint. So I am just going to stick that right there. Uh, the gas analyzer sniffer right here. I will just walk to the back of the car and put that in. Okay, so we will go here. We will go to vehicle setup. Cylinders, six cycles, four, magnetic offset, not using magnetic timing offset, vacuum display, I'm in one inches of mercury, so that's fine. Go to menu, menu. Oh, it wants that, okay. Continue, there we go. And then we hit two, there we go. So now we're set up and I can see the draw. Oh, I think actually, maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe I do have that on backwards. So right now, no, that is correct. So currently, uh, the current draw is 0.4 amps. So that's current going uh, from the battery, and that's just powering the light that's under the hood here. So 
We'll see that go positive if it's pulling from the battery. That'll go negative when it's going to the battery or it's charging. So let's go and start the vehicle. Make sure your parking brake is on. Give it a bit of a jump here. There we go. So right now it's curb idling at about 740. Battery voltage is 14.6 volts. Current is negative 5.6 and going down. So that's the battery charging. Our vacuum at manifold is 17.6 inches of mercury. Okay, and I'm not gonna deal with that until I have the engine settled down. But let's set our timing. So I'll turn the switch on to turn on the strobe. I will look at the tachometer and bring it up to 2000 so I can then set my uh, offset. So what I'm doing there is I'm setting it to specification, which is 15 degrees of timing. And then send, and then I'm looking here, and it should be on, you probably can't see this, but the timing mark's currently at the zero mark on the case. So the timing is good. So that looks all good. So let me turn on the gas analyzer. We can see that there. So that's picking up, it's sniffing. It'll take a moment to stabilize. We'll just ignore that for the moment. I'll turn that up. So I'm seeing a nice consistent spark. The timing looks about right. The voltage looks about right. And this one here, that looks all good. Looks good. That looks all about good. And our hydrocarbons do actually go down, so that's nice. So I am happy with that. Turn the brightness down there so I can freeze that display and I'll print that off. Oh, I see, printer offline. There we go. Good. I'll go to our menu here. I'm going to turn that up there and adjust that a little bit. And I'm going to do a power balance. Okay, that's good. You can see how it dropped out that cylinder. Brought it back. Did that one. 
came back. And that one. And that looks about right. Oh, I'll the strobe on. So that looks pretty consistent. I'm just gonna ignore the RPM change on that one here, but that looks all about correct. Looks pretty good. This is a very healthy engine. It shouldn't have any problems. It was only rebuilt this time last year. So sure, I'll hit menu. We can go back to the live data if we so desired. There we go. It's sampling. No, this looks happy. This is how you do it. And it's all set up. It's all hooked up. Looks great. Oh yeah, the one last thing, my favorite button of all on this here, engine kill. And off she goes. Okay, and that concludes the test.